Hey, it's Scotty. So, I wanted to address this epidemic of violence, um, especially school shootings, but just in general, this epidemic of violence, this culture of violence that we have, this environment of anger and I wanted to talk about that. I didn't think really that this was my place, that I had anything to do with this. I'm with Gray Perry. He's going to help me through this. Um, and I was just watching the news. So there was a horrific school shooting yesterday after um, another mass shooting at a grocery store. And... I just heard a statistic on the news that said that people who commit mass shootings often have abused animals in the past and that an extremely high percentage um, of people who commit violence and especially mass shootings and school shootings have been found to abuse animals and that it's one of the predictors of mass shooters and serial killers and um <laughs> not yet guys we'll have lunch in a minute you know even in the most heartbreaking of times these sweet animals can just make you smile and they're a reason to keep going and to get through it and to be strong and to not give up. And so I was listening to uh, a number of news and, and just commentaries about what's happening and what's happening in our country. And one of the people that I really um, admire and, and listen to was talking about how the uh, animal cruelty is a predictor and that if we can intervene in different ways to help people and to stop people who have uh, committed violence against animals, then we could save a lot of lives. And, and I'm not a lawmaker and so obviously the ways in which we might intervene legally um, and the laws that we might put into place to intervene against people who have committed cruelty to animals, um, whether it's through banning them from getting guns or, um, you know, putting them in certain programs or who know, you know, mental health treatment, all of those things uh, that's not for me to say, although we all have the uh, voice and the power to vote um, and we should vote for people who want to solve these problems. Um, but as someone who um, tries to raise awareness about uh, animal care and compassion for animals, um, I feel like I wanted to say something that you know, it is within all of our power to uh, respect animals, foster respect for animals, and lead by example. Um, I do have a carrot for you. He didn't seem to want the carrot before, but are you reconsidering? <laughs> Here. Well, it's here for you if you want it. So it's really up to all of us to teach animals, I mean, to teach others, to teach especially children um, to care for, respect animals, treat them with respect, see them as beings that deserve respect and compassion, no matter how small, no matter how 
powerless, voiceless, all these animals deserve a life. They deserve to be treated with respect, to not be hurt, and to feel safe. So if we can all ask ourselves, how can we teach compassion to each other? How can we teach compassion to children? And how can we speak up for animals? Uh, and although, right, if, if somebody has um, trauma and they are acting out cruelly against animals, that's a predictor of um, future violence. But I, I think that maybe the inverse also works. Even people who have experienced trauma, hurt, um, by seeing animals and being able to care for them. And, and, you know, obviously if someone's gone through trauma and in general, animals, the care for animals requires adult supervision in most cases. Um, but the act of caring for animals can heal a broken heart, can heal our past traumas. And I, I don't think that it can be underestimated or understated. Now, I mean, I'm not a uh, psychologist or psychiatrist or a mental health expert, but I do know what it feels like in my heart to take care of these animals. And I do know what it feels like and what it is when I facilitate adoptions and I see kids that have compassion and have patience. Um, and I also know what it's like when I see kids that, that seem to not quite get it and to be there and to be part of the learning process of these children when their parents are teaching them respect. Now, I don't think that kids should learn responsibility at the expense of children, of, of animals' lives. Um, I feel like, you know, it is up to the parents to ensure that these animals are going to be safe. Are you ready to go home? Okay, we're going to wrap it up. But I want to be a part of, and I want to encourage you guys to be a part of this uh, learning process, this awareness, uh, and this shift towards compassion for animals, for each other. And Let's engage in some concrete action to try to make this situation better. So I'd love to hear your suggestions and maybe we can, you know, continue uh, with more videos about how to raise awareness, raise compassion for animals and how we as a society can do better because we owe it to our kids. We owe it to each other. We owe it to the animals. We can do better. We have to do better. You know, there's only so much heartache and heartbreak that we can take, and it just seems like it, it it's never ending. So let's try to make a change together. I really do look forward to reading your comments. And I'll just put my entire guinea pig... Uh, care playlist right here if you want to uh, dive into that but I'm very excited to read your comments and and let's keep this conversation going all right until next time thanks for watching okay guys okay